Hello everybody and welcome back to another brainstorm. Today we're going to be talking about sequences and sequences is a very very important topic that you need to know about for the GCSE maths and further maths course. So we're going to split this video up into three main parts. First of all we're going to talk about finding the nth term of a linear and a quadratic sequence. Then we're going to move on to arithmetic sequences which may be a new concept for some of you and then we're also going to talk about the sum of an arithmetic sequence. And finally, we are going to move on to talk about the limiting value of a sequence. But this is a topic only for further maths students. So if you don't study further maths, then you don't need to worry about revising it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by talking about the nth term. So what exactly is the nth term? Well, it's an expression for a sequence of numbers in terms of n. Now, that does sound a little bit complicated, so we can break it down to start with. So what is a sequence of numbers? Well, a sequence of numbers is just a string of numbers that have a pattern to them. So for example, if I write down the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7, this could be a sequence of numbers, and they're held together by the pattern, we're just adding to each time. So that would be our sequence. So for example, when n is equal to 1, we're talking about the first term of the sequence. In the same way, when n is equal to 2, we're talking about the second term of the sequence, n is equal to 3, n is equal to 4, etc. So a typical question, a very, very simple question about the nth term might be, the nth term of a sequence is n squared plus 30 over n. So in this case, n squared plus 30 over n is our algebraic expression that we're looking at. Find the third and the fifth term. Okay, so you remember we said when n is equal to 1, we're talking about the first term. So when they ask us to find the third term, we just set n is equal to 3. And to find what the value of the third term is, we just plug 3 into our expression. So we just do 3 squared plus 30 over 3. 3 squared is 9 plus 10 is equal to 19. So 19 is our third value in this sequence. So if you can imagine it being first value, second value, third value, fourth value, fifth value. Our third value here is going to be 19. Now it's also asked us to find the fifth value, so we just set n is equal to 5, sub 5 into the original equation. So 5 squared is 25, plus 30 over 5 is 6, 25 plus 6 is equal to 31. So 31 is going to be our fifth value. Now they've only asked us to find these three, but this is a very, very simple question about the nth term. Okay, so now we've looked at what do we do with an algebraic expression for the nth term. Another skill that we need to know for the GCSE exam is actually finding that algebraic expression from a sequence, i.e. a set of numbers. So we're going to start off in the video by looking at a linear sequence. So first of all, what do we mean by a linear sequence? If we take a look at our example here, we've got 3, 12, 21, 30, so on and so forth. And if we look at the jumps between each one of the numbers, I, what do we do to 3 to get to 12? Well, we add 9, 12 to 21, add 9, and add 9. We'll see that the jumps are exactly the same from term to term. And the jumps here are actually known as a common difference. I'm going to put C diff for short. And if the common difference is a constant number, our sequence is known as a linear sequence. Okay, so we've got a general equation here to find the nth term, and our general equation is a n plus b, okay? So the value of a is just the common difference between each one of the numbers. So in our case, the common difference, remember, is these jumps plus 9, and we can say a is equal to 9. We can straight away plug a into the um, expression here, and we can say that 9n plus b. That's the start. Now we've still got this b remaining, which we need to find. So for b, we just substitute n and a into this expression and put it equal to the value of n. Now, that does sound a little bit complicated, but it's a very simple method of working it out. Just take the first number. Remember when we're looking at the first value of a sequence, n is equal to 1. So we can say that 9, remember we're looking at this one here, 9 times 1, because our n is equal to 1, plus b, which is the value we're trying to find, is equal to, and we put it equal to the particular value in the sequence. So when n is equal to 1 in our sequence, it gives us a value of 3. And we just solve it as if it's a normal algebraic expression for b, minusing 9 from both sides is equal to minus 6. So right now we've got a value for a, we've now got a value for b, plug it into this original expression, a n plus b, 
And so we go 9n minus 6. And that is the nth term for this sequence. Okay, so our questions to find the algebraic expression for the nth term can be taken to the next step. So instead of asking us about a linear sequence, the exam board can also ask us about a quadratic sequence. So what do we mean by a quadratic sequence? So if we take a look at our example here, we've got the numbers 3, 6, 13, 24, 39. So let's start off by looking at the first difference. So it is the jump between each one of the values. So to get from 3 to 6, we add 3. To get from 6 to 13, however, we're adding 7. And to get from 13 up to 24, we are adding 11. Okay, so now if we take each one of these jumps, we see that it, they're not a constant, so it can't be a linear sequence. And by the way, these first set of jumps is known as our third difference. Now, if we find the jump between each one of the jumps, so what do we do for up to plus three to get to plus seven? Well, we add four, add four, and now we've seen a constant between them. And these set of jumps here are known as the second difference. So the rule for a quadratic sequence is that the second difference is actually a constant. Okay, so you'll remember that our expression for the nth term of a linear sequence was a n plus b. Our expression for the nth term of a quadratic sequence is a n squared plus b n plus c. You'll see that the end of this is very, very similar to the linear sequence, but this time we've got this a n squared to worry about. Okay, so the value of a, first of all, is what we need to find out. And the value of a, something that you just have to remember, is half of the second difference. Well, luckily we've already found the second difference, which is 4. Half of 4 is equal to 2, therefore a is equal to 2. You can already plug that into our expression to start with. We do 2n squared plus bn plus c. We just need to find our b and c. Okay, so to find b, first of all, we need to write out a n squared. So for us, our a n squared is now 2n squared. So we write it out as if it were a normal sequence. So for example, if n is equal to one, one squared is one times two is two. Two squared is four times two is eight. And then we've got 18, then we've got 32. And we've made a sequence in itself for two n squared. And then we compare that to our original sequence, which we were given to, okay? So we write, I like to write mine underneath, so it's easy to compare. So we go three, six, 13, 24. So the next step for this is to find what do we do to 2n squared to get to our original sequence. And remember not to go the other way because then we can have problems. Okay, so I'm going to name this d because this is the difference between our 2n squared and our original sequence. So to get from 2 to 3, what do we do? Well, we add 1. 8 to 6, we're going to minus 2. And then from 18 down to 13, we go minus 5. And 3 is actually more than enough for us to work with. Okay, so then we take our sequence of differences, okay? So that's just this sequence which we've written out here. So we've got 1, negative 2, negative 5. And now we solve that as if it were a linear sequence, but this time we're doing b, n plus c, okay? So you remember b is going to be the common difference. So here we just do minus 3, minus 3, b is equal to minus 3, fine. Then we sub in minus 3. And we're going to take the first value, so here n is equal to 1, and it gives us a value of 1 as well. So minus 3n plus c is equal to something. We plug in our values for n, so minus 3, we're looking at the first value, so we put it in. Plus c is equal to a value of 1. And we solve it as um, an algebraic expression for c. So minus 3 plus c is equal to 1, add 3 to both sides, c is equal to 4. So you'll notice now that we've got a value for b, we've got a value for c, and we also had our value for a. Sub it into our original expression for the quadratic sequence, which remember is a n squared plus b n plus c to get our n term. So we've got 2n squared minus 3n plus 4. And that is our nth term for the quadratic sequence. So now we're going to take a look at arithmetic sequences. Arithmetic sequence is just another word for a linear sequence, where you remember that the common difference between term to term is a constant. So although we did look at our arithmetic sequence and the general equation for the um, nth term was a n plus b. 
Now we've got a new equation that helps us to work it out a little bit faster. A plus N minus one times D, where N, A is the first term in the sequence and D is the common difference between them. And these are the three typical questions that you could be asked about the arithmetic sequences. So first of all, they could give you a sequence as we can see here and they'll ask you to find the nth term. Very, very simple. We just need to find A, which is our first term and they've given to us, it's five. D is our common difference, so we just find the jumps. What do we do to five to get to eight? Add three, add three, add three. So our D is equal to three. We sub these two values into our general equation here. So five plus three brackets N minus one. You'll notice that I've just moved the D to the front of the brackets for ease of access. Five plus three N minus three. And that is 3n plus 2. That's our nth term expression. Very, very quick. Now, if you do prefer the first method, do go ahead and use that. But this is a lot quicker and a lot more efficient for the exam. Find the hundredth term. So you'll remember from the start, when we're looking at the hundredth term, n is equal to 100. We do 3n plus 2. Sub in 100, where n is present. 3 times 100 plus 2. So our hundredth term is going to be 3 times 100 is 300 plus 2 is equal to 302. Right, finally, they may ask you, is a certain number a part of this sequence? And it's very, very simple to solve these. You just take our nth term expression, which is 3n plus 2 in this case, and we put it equal to the number that they're asking about, 2, 4, 3. And we solve it for n just as if it was a normal algebraic expression. 3n is equal to 2, 4, 1 n is equal to 2, 4, 1 over 3, which is equal to 80 and a third. Now here's how we find out whether it's part of a sequence. Now you'll notice that the number for n in the nth term just tells us what is the position of a number. So for example, when we're talking n is equal 1, we're talking about the first number in the sequence. When n is 2, we're talking about the second number, so on, so forth, third, fourth, fifth. Now you'll notice that these are all integers, they're all whole numbers, because we can only have a first, second, third, fourth, etc. position. We can't have an 80 and a third value inside of a sequence. Because we can't have an 80 and a third position in our sequence, we can then write this little concluding statement where n is not equal to an integer, therefore 243 is not a part of the sequence and it's very important that you write a little conclusion like this just so your examiner knows what the final answer is what you've reached okay so the final part of the arithmetic sequence section is how to find the sum of an arithmetic sequence so this is just a method for example if they gave us the sequence one two three four five all the way up to let's say 50 this is a method of working out what is the value of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way up to 50. And we have to use this formula here. And I tell you what, it's a complicated formula, but if you know it, then it's easy marks in the exam. So Sn, which is the sum of all of these terms, so the value of all of this, is equal to n over 2. Now this time, in this case, n isn't actually telling us what is the position of a number in a sequence n is actually the number of terms that we're trying to work out. a is equal to the first term in the sequence and d is equal to the common difference in the terms. So let's do this practice question here to make it a bit more clearer. So for the sequence 15, 18, 21, 24, so on so forth, what is the sum of the first 50 terms? So for this question s of n is equal to our sum, it's the unknown number that we're trying to work out for n is equal to 50 because they've asked us to find the first 50 terms a is equal to 15 that's our first number d is equal to our common difference so what is the jump between each one of these numbers well in this case we've got plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 d is equal to 3. so we're just going to write out our formula plugging in the various numbers we found s of n is equal to 50 over 2 which is 25 brackets 2 times 15 is 30 plus n minus 1 is 50 minus 1 49 and we're going to times that by d which is 3 and here what you do is you literally just plug this into your calculator to get your final answer you don't need to worry about doing all that in your head and the sum of all of these numbers is 4425
Okay, so the final part of this video, we're gonna be looking at the limiting value of a sequence. Now bear in mind that this is only on the further maths course. So if you're not doing further maths, then you don't need to revise this for your exam. So what the limiting value of a sequence asks is that if the numbers of the term approach a certain number, when n approaches infinity, what is that number? Now this does sound very, very complicated, but it will make sense once we go through it. This is literally just all about knowing a logical process to solve the problem. So, remember how we said when we're looking at the first value, n is 1, n is 2, n is 3. So when n is approaching affinity, we're basically saying that n is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what we'll see is that for fractional expressions especially, which is what are usually asked for the limiting value questions, these numbers are going to get closer and closer and closer to a certain number. And these questions are just asking us, what is that number? So like I said, they do usually ask this question for fractional expressions. And the idea of n approaching infinity is shown by this arrow here. So the first thing that we have to do to solve this is we have to divide both the numerator and the denominator by n. So in the example which we've got here, we do 2n minus 1, which is our numerator, divide that by n. That's the same as 2n over n minus 1 over n. And as you know, these n's can cancel out here. So what's going to happen is we've got 2 minus 1 over n. We do exactly the same for the denominator, 3n plus 2 over n is equal to 3n over n plus 2 over n. n's cancel out there. And so this is 3 plus 2 over n. And we can rewrite it as 2 minus 1 over n over 3 plus 2 over n. Okay, so this is where we need a bit of thinking. I want you to just look at this expression here, 1 over n. Now, when n is approaching infinity, we're trying to say that n is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so we know for any fraction, if the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but the numerator is staying exactly the same, that fraction is going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Let me give you an example of this. So in this example, if n is equal to 1, then 1 over n is equal to 1 over 1, which is 1. If n is equal to 10, we've got 1 over 10, which is 0.1. n is 100, 0 0.01. N is a thousand, for example, 0 0.001. Okay, so we can see here that N is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, i.e., N is approaching infinity. What's happening here, though, is you'll notice that the values of 1 over N are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and for that, we can say that they're actually getting closer and closer to zero. Okay, so the next thing that we need to write is that as N approaches infinity, 1 over n is approaching 0. Exactly the same is going to happen here for 2 over n. As n approaches infinity, 2 over n is approaching 0. And you can sub in the values and see how that works as well. So the next thing that we do is these values of 1 over n and 2 over n might as well just be 0 the closer we get to infinity. So we rewrite this, but instead of those fractions, we write a 0. 2 minus 0 over 3 plus 0. So that's just 2 over 3. So the answer to our question, the limiting value is 2 over 3. And what you can do is, if you want to check your answer for this, you take the original expression here, and you can sub in increasing values of n. n is 1, n is 10, n is 100, 1,000, a million, whatever. But what you'll notice is that it's actually getting closer and closer to 2 over 3. So 2 over 3 is known as our limiting value for this given sequence. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you guys all for watching. Please make sure you hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys soon.